Welcome to today's lesson, Flower Power. Remember what we learned in our last lesson about microclimates and habitats? Today, we're going to build upon that knowledge and talk about how flowers have adapted to new environments. In today's lesson, we will learn the different parts of a flower and learn all about the relationship between flowers and pollinators. Grab your garden journal because we're going to start off with the vocab. So take notes and follow along. Our first word that you can write down is plant anatomy. Plant anatomy is the different parts that make up a plant and allow it to function. Let's take a closer look at a plant's anatomy. You can see the different parts listed here. Some of them we already know, like petals and stems. Some other parts you might not be as familiar with. For example, did you know that flowers reproduce using an ovary and pollen carried on their anthers? Try and draw a diagram of a flower in your garden journal, including some of the reproductive parts listed here. Pollination is when insects and birds help plants to reproduce by carrying pollen from male plants to female plants. There are many animals that help with the process of pollination, like butterflies, bats, hummingbirds, and more. Adaptation is when plants or animals learn to adapt or change to fit their environment and survive better. Can you think of different types of adaptations? I have an example of an adaptation. Giraffes, over time, developed longer and longer necks so that they could reach the higher branches of trees and have more food available to them, and this helped them survive longer. When adaptations like that build up over time, that's called evolution. It's when a plant or an animal slowly changes to be better suited for its environment, normally through the process of adaptations. When two different species evolve together, that can be called co-evolution. Normally, this happens to the benefit of both species. Many flowers and pollinators co-evolve together, and now they can't survive without each other. The flowers rely on the specific pollinators to help them with their reproduction, and without the pollinators, they couldn't make their seeds and reproduce. The pollinators couldn't survive without the flowers because that's the only food source they're adapted to eat. Can you think of some ways a flower might adapt to attract pollinators? Do you think maybe it would use bright colors to draw pollinators in? Or maybe it can adapt to be a shape that's easy for the pollinator to access? Animals also have to adapt if their habitat gets changed by a human impact. For example, if a lizard lives somewhere where a house gets built, he might need to adapt to start eating a different food source that's available to him now. Over many generations, that lizard might evolve an adaptation that can permanently help him to live in his changed environment. Thanks for paying such close attention to our lesson today. Now it's time for you to hear from your garden teacher. Let's see what you learned. Try and answer all these questions in your garden journal. Pause so you have time. Hello, everybody. We're here in the garden at Santa Rosa Academic Academy today in Atascadero. And we're gonna consider flower power. Let's get into it. So as you heard earlier in the video, animals and plants develop adaptations over time to better survive and thrive in their environment. This especially happens when their environment changes. These adaptations um, occur over many generations of the plant and animal, and this process is called evolution. Today, we're gonna look at some flowers 
in the garden, and we're going to consider how they might have adapted to their environments over time. Right here, we're going to review flower anatomy to start. Earlier in the video, you yourself drew a flower and the parts that it has. Right here, we have the flower from a pea plant, and there are a few parts that I want to point out. If you want to follow along at home and grab a flower from your garden, use an instrument to cut it safely and do the same that I'm doing, feel free. So what parts do we want to notice? Flowers all have petals. This pea has a white petal. I'm sure that you've heard of a petal before, but let's learn some other plant parts as well. Around the bottom edge of the flower, we have what are called sepals. Sepals are similar to leaves, um, but they cover the flower before it blooms. At the bottom of this flower, this larger section, is the ovary. The ovary of a flower is where seeds will be produced. And if we look into the middle of the flower, there's more I want us to notice. In the very middle, we have multiple thin parts of the plant and one thicker part. The thin parts are called stamen, and this is where pollen comes from. The thicker part is called the pistil, and this is what receives pollen from pollinators. These parts exist to help the plant create and receive pollen, which will allow the plant to produce seeds. Welcome. This plant here is called hummingbird sage. This is a California native plant. Based on the name, hummingbird sage, can you guess what animal it needs to pollinate it? So this plant has developed an adaptation, a change over time, to help that animal, you guessed it right, the hummingbird, it, um, it helps the hummingbird pollinate its flowers by producing very long pointed flowers. At this time of year, the plant doesn't have flowers. We'll put a photo in there for you. I want you to see how long those flowers are. Can you imagine a hummingbird flying up to that flower and receiving or giving pollen? This plant here is called calendula. Calendula is native to northern Africa in South Central Europe. Can you see anything about this plant that might be an adaptation? Something that helps it survive? One thing I notice is the flowers here are very bright colored. These bright yellow flowers help attract pollinators. This is an example of an adaptation for this plant's survival. One thing we can't see right now, but if you do a little research, you can learn that calendula flowers actually close before it rains. Could this be an example of an adaptation? Would that help it survive better? So now I want you to take a look around your home Try to find some flowers. Can you notice anything about those flowers? It might be an adaptation, some change, something about the flower that helps it survive better. Go take a look around, and I hope you can notice some adaptations for these plants. Flowers have power. Thank you for watching.